so far so good for the Wilmington Blue Rocks through two and a half. Wilmington two, Salem nothing, which makes a lot of folks down in Lynchburg, Virginia happy. Red Sox entering play, two games up on the Hillcats, three games including tonight remaining in the first half of the 2017 season. The magic number to clinch is two for the Red Sox. Anderson Miller, the batter. He takes a fastball at the knees for strike one. And remember, Lynchburg holds the tiebreaker, so essentially it's a game and a half lead for Salem, which makes it much more manageable for Lynchburg. They certainly still need help. Right now they are scoreless with the keys in the bottom of the fourth. The worst part about that game last night for Lynchburg, they allowed Frederick into seven game skid. The 0-1. This did foul back to the screen. It seemed like everything was set up for the Hillcats. Especially when the Blue Rocks jumped all over Salem in that second inning. But you got to take care of your own business. Absolutely. And Salem caught a break too because Lynchburg lost. So they still had that slim margin to work with. The 0-2 high and outside. One ball and two strikes to Miller. I think if you're the Blue Rock, you don't really care who wins. I mean, if Salem clinches after getting swept in a four-game series, they'd be fine with that. You just want to fulfill your role as spoiler. Wind up and the one-two to Miller. Check swing, breaking him on the dirty. Did not go on appeal. So the count levels two and two to Anderson. Whatever I think of this situation, I think of the movie for love of the game. If you remember that scene where Kevin Costner is warming up in the bullpen. And his manager tells him it's a throwaway game. And he replies, it means something to the Red Sox. 2-2 Two -two delivery. Swinging a fly ball well hit to deep center field. Matheny on his horse at the warning track. Reaches up, can't get it. Off the base of the fence. Miller speeds past second. Digging for third. He gets there. Lead off triple for Anderson Miller. His fourth of the season. And the Rocks are right back in business. Already up 2-0 here in the third inning. Miller putting an absolute jolt into that 2-2 two -two pitch. An extra base hit for the center fielder. He now has two hits and as many trips. Matt, you mentioned he was swinging the bat very well. One of the only hitters in last night's win to not get a hit, taking it out here tonight with two of his own. There's Chris DeVito. DeVito back left side against the right hander. You're going to bring the infield in, at least on the right side. Third baseman will stay back behind the bat, which is odd considering you have a lefty hitter. First pitch. Out away. I don't know if I've ever seen that against the left hander where three on the pull side are in and the opposite side corner infielder is halfway at best. We have an odd defensive alignment unless they're respecting DeVito's skill set of going the opposite way, but I'm still shocked they're doing this. Then I'd move Hockamy back at first two. The 0-1 grounded through the whole right side. Base hit for Chris DeVito. Miller can walk home. It's 3-0 Blue Rocks here in the third inning. Well, it didn't matter at all. DeVito punches it through the right side in between Hockamy and Rivera, the second baseman. Another run in. This time, just two batters into the third inning, and the Rocks continue to roll. Had Rivera been back, he probably gets that ball, but the run scores. And certainly where the third baseman position was insignificant is Chase Lotto, right-handed hitting catcher. But again, DeVito's a pull hitter. It's just a weird way to play it. Lotto swings and crushes one high in the air. Center field playable. He got under it. He hit it a mile high. It finally descends, and Kate Matheny will make the catch. Follows out, one down here in the third inning. Well, that one went so high into the air, I borderline thought it disappeared into the clouds that are hanging over top of Frawley Stadium. Could you imagine if he hit that with a little more angle, how far that would have gone? That would have had some exit velocity on it, no doubt. That would have been Aaron Judge X. Here's Roman Collins. Collins will bat left side. Grounded out to first, his first time up. One out man at first, and Collins laid on a fastball. Nothing in one to Roman. 
Amazing how, as the night goes, the crowd grows here at Frawley Stadium on these fireworks Fridays. Still filing in here at the ballpark. Oh, on to Cottle. So we're going to fly ball, hit well, deep to right center. Myers going back, it's over his head and off the base of the fence. DeVito digging for third. It's a late stop sign from Quirk. Good decision by Jamie. He was waving him around until DeVito hit the bag at third. And then Jamie said, well, maybe we'll wait another batter. And a double for Roman Collins. Two in scoring position with one down here in the third inning. And Quirk kept backpedaling down the line, two hands up, saying stop, stop, stop. And DeVito, when he gets in motion, it takes a lot to slow down. Six foot two, 220 pounds. But great job by DeVito realizing the stop sign was up. In DeVito's defense, he picked up Quirk and was getting the windmill around and then put his head down to start going full speed. And then as he took a peek to find the bag at third, he just happened to notice his manager about to bear hug him to try to get him to stop as he was coming around the beach. Paul Abbott out to the mound for the second time already. Some stirring in the Salem bullpen. Red Sox starting pitching has let them down at a bad moment here in their season. Last night, the top 10 prospect, Roniel Rodez, was touched up for five runs, four earned on nine hits in less than five innings of work against this red-hot Blue Rocks offense. And tonight, Shawarin, a top 15 prospect, same situation. Three runs already given up, and there's just one out here in the third inning. Here's Court Peterson who roped the single and scored a run his first time up. Got that two-out rally started last inning. Infield in again. First pitch. Swing and a miss. Chased down and in. Nothing at one. Peterson and on base now five straight plate appearances. Shaward ready at the belt, the 0-1. Low and inside, gets away. Breaking from third, DeVito, the throw to the plate, gets away again. Backed up though alertly by Chavis, but a run scores. Up the third, base goes Collins on a wild pitch. It's 4 up in Blue Rocks here in the third inning. It is just unraveling for Salem here, Matt. Last night and now tonight, they just can't get out of their own way, it seems. Infield remains in. A one ball, one strike count here to Peters. Doesn't need to reach to extend the lead. Fly ball, get it done. Collins has average speed, maybe even slightly above average speed at third. Here's the one wall. Swinging a bouncing ball off his leg. It caroms out to the mound. But it's foul ball. It's one and two to Peterson. Some throwing, I believe, now in the Santa bullpen. They like to warm up all the way on the edge of the pen, which is obscured from our vision. Which actually, I guess, is a pretty good strategy. It is completely blind from the Blue Rocks dugout, so they can't really see, A, who is up, B, if anyone is up. Right-hander ready at the belt. And the one-two. High with a fastball. Cat levels two balls. And two strikes to Court Peterson. One out, runner at third. Four-nothing Blue Rocks lead. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Righty-lefty matchup here. Wander Franco waiting on deck. The 2-2. Two -two. In the dirt, great block by Rod. Well, Shawarn just doesn't seem to have it right now. Three and two to Peterson. His confidence has been rattled ever since that two-out rally started in the second. Rocks have gotten big time contact against him this inning. Hitting two balls off the fence here. A triple by Miller, a double by Cottle. On any other night, both those balls leave the yard. The 3 2. Low and inside, ball four. And what do these pitchers all have in common? Rye is set up towards the outside portion of the plate, sliding all the way across the zone to lunge and grab it. He is missing by really wide margins. That's his first walk. Runners at the corners now. Still only one out for Franco. And we talked about his odd delivery, almost a 45-degree angle. So you wonder if he's kind of whipping that right arm across his chest more, forcing the pitches 
to miss by such wide margins, but Rye has been very busy behind the plate tonight. Wander with that straight up stance, right side. Infield moves back to double play depth. First and third, one down. First pitch, Wander waves and misses. Nothing at one. The double by Franco just inside the chalk at third. And into the left field corner. Again, chance to score a run without hit here. Fly ball to the outfield would get it done. A one offering. Swinging a punch shot back to second base, sinking fast, down for a hit. Little blooper for Wander Franco, read brilliantly by Peterson. He'll go all the way to third, and then scampering to second on the throw is Franco. Heads up, he's running by the Blue Rocks. They lead it 5 nothing here in the third inning. Salem is just coming apart at the seams right now. Not playing smart ball at all, and Wilmington is taking advantage of every mental mischief. It is just unbelievable. We talked about it in the opener last night, how solid and consistent Salem has been throughout the entire year. These last two games, they have looked anything but. So here's Travis Mason. He got a single his first time up, takes a fastball down the middle for a strike. Bethini just trying to do too much. The bleeder fell in front of him. He overran it as he lunged back to grab it. He slipped. Got to throw the ball to second base at that point. Tried to make a hero throw to third. Air mailed the cutoff man and Wander alertly went to second. And as a result, no double play opportunity. So the infield has to come back in. Second and third. Three runs in the inning. Five nothing blue runs. He won. Bezos takes wide. One ball and one strike. There is definite activity in the bullpen now. It looks like a right-hander loosening. No idea who. Peterson at third, Franco at second. 1-1 one -one to Mazur. Check swing, pitch was low, an appeal behind the mound of the base umpire. And no go, so it's David Martinez, 2-1 to Mazur. Like that, an infield single his first time up. Diving play by Akami, but another mental miscue as he threw to first. He really didn't have a chance at it out. Threw it wide, and it led to a run scoring of the play. Two on. Low and inside ball three. He has no control, it seems, of the breaking ball right now. He's just sweeping across the zone, nowhere near the target he's shooting for. Three one delivered. Low and inside ball four. So the second walk in the last three batters here for Shawari. And that's going to be it for the right hander. He cannot make it out of the third. Rocks are already up five nothing and they have the bases loaded with only one out. Pitching change presented by Diamond State Coins and Currency. Five nothing Blue Rocks looking for more. We'll tell you about the new earlier when we come back on 89.7 WGLS FM.